Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, it's Dodgy from Big Mac's Workshop and Paint Studio. Today we're painting a MDF bunker. And um, this is actually Tom's video. I'm just doing the audio for it uh, because he's pretty camera shy. So if you can give him some likes and comments on this video, that will be very much appreciated. Encourage him to get on this camera and get out there a bit. We've started this with a satin varnish because it's a wood texture and we don't want the paint to soak on to it too much and then we've gone ahead and used a black primer. Saddle brown has been applied in patches because we're going to do a chipping fluid. And we put it we put it on in sporadic patterns. Just here and there because you know as usual we're using the chipping fluid and you don't want all the rust to look the same colour underneath. Next we're going to go ahead and start using a dark sand and again all we're doing is putting it in patches Now we love doing rust effects in the studio it's so easy once you've got the right tools to do it Now if, um, if you've got any MDF kits yourself or have any experience with them, leave a comment and let us know what you think. What do you prefer, resin kits or MDF kits? I prefer um, resin kits because it tends to be more detail in it, but being able to put a flat pack together with a bit of PVA glue saves a lot of time and effort. Uh, next we're going to go ahead and spray patches of flat earth on. Once that's all dry, we're going to go to the AK Interactive Heavy Chipping Fluid, which we enjoy using on absolutely anything and everything we can. Because uh, most of our videos are 40k based and 40k is a dark depiction of the future and uh, everything should be rusted and dirty and filthy, it just sort of adds something to it. We're going to give a really nice generous coat of heavy chipping fluid to this. Not sure why the chipping fluid was bubbling up the way it was on this surface, it might have something to do with the satin underneath. We want to run some experiments on that and see what other effects we can come up with because it gave more of a heated pipe look when it was um, scrubbed off rather than the regular chipping look. Next Tom's gone ahead and used uh, German grey to coat the entire model with a nice, nice even coat and covering up all those rust effects that we've done. And next we're going to highlight those edges with a natural grey by model colour. I'm going to spray this on from quite a distance so it fades in, leaving the um, strongest highlight towards the edges of the model. Because of the shape of the model this is really easy to get around with an airbrush. As you can see Tom's just rotating it, go around the top edge, bottom edge doesn't matter if it gets in the grooves because uh, you can add washers and darker paints in there later on. And yes this bunker has a massive assault cannon on the top of it.
and is saying what's not to like about massive assault cannons. I, I wasn't criticising the massive assault cannon, I think it's cool. Although I know you're more of a plasma cannon kind of guy. Hell yeah. That's if you, I don't know, I don't think your bunker's going to stand for very long. Just roll some ones, Andy. <laughs> I'm good at that. Next was a dark sea green, which is actually a grey colour and not green. But you know what Vallejo are like for the weird colour names. Not as bad as GW though. And we're also then using Lucifer Bronze by Icor, which is not a paint that you can get anymore, I don't think. I think they've stopped making that. Um, you can use tin bits, which would give the same colour. But this Icor stuff, if you can find any of it lying around or get some off eBay, it's worth having. It's a nice metallic paint to use. Um, it was on smooth enough, unlike GW paints, which is like spreading butter half the time. Well, not all the paints, definitely the metallics though. And if, if you thin them with medium, yeah, you tend to just end up with little bits of glitter everywhere. I think they really need to improve their metallic range. As you can see, Tom's gone ahead, done all the trims on that, and done all the little bolts and all the detail work. I mean, for, an M for MDF kits, you can actually get quite a lot of materials, I mean, quite a lot of um, detail out of those materials. Also, Tom's now started scrubbing the top layers of paint off with a little bit of water and a toothbrush. These were also i bronze and then toned down with some violet, blues and blacks to give a heated assault cannon sort of look. Um, the inner pipes were painted separately and then slotted in and they were done in obviously a bunch of blues. I don't actually have those on the paint list. I think it looks pretty good. Next up is painting the door with uh, a black primer using Tamiya masking tape to seal off the seal off the parts he wants to paint yellow. And this is why he's not done the trim on the door with the Icor colours because uh, it's easier to work from the inside of a model outwards than outside and try and work your brush in. There's a um, if you do it the other way around, there's a much higher chance of you smudging the edges or hitting something you don't want to hit. And once that's left to dry, uh, just simply peel off the Tamiya tape. If you haven't got any Tamiya masking tape in your collection, I suggest you get some. The stuff's a lot better than normal masking tape. Paint doesn't leak through the edges of it and it usually gives a very nice clean cut. And is saying it's got kind of a rubbery texture, but it doesn't peel your paint off. This next colour is yellow icor by Model Colour. And then again, Tom's gonna put a bit of water on it, scrub that down. As you can see on the um, surface of the bunker on the sides, it gave more of a heated sort of burn effect rather than a rust effect on this. And it's something I'd like to try on a bit of terrain, see if we can. Um, redo that effect and make some kind of big chimney or something uh, in an industrial complex and heat it up like that. I think that would look really cool. And it's like I was saying, the Tamiya tape is kind of a rubbery texture. It sticks well, but it doesn't pull your paint off as much as normal tapes would do. So it's the best paint for the job there. And Tom's going ahead using good old model mate's rust effect. How did I not see that one coming? Every time. Bit of rust build up and everything there. And I'm pretty sure at some point it uses a little bit of streaking grime. Just to add some more details to it. Some more depth. That's that. So quick and easy. You can do this one yourself. So, um, that's as much as we've got time for this time. Here's the finished product, and if you like the video, um, leave a like. 
you want to see more of our videos, hit subscribe. And if you've got any questions or any more ideas for videos, leave a comment. Alright guys, we'll catch you next week.